Hello, I'm Bruno Elino, and I'm the principal investigator of the Person Center Research Group. So uh, our research group has three main interests. The first one is to understand uh, people's experiences with health and illness. The second is to assess interventions that are directed to um, common conditions managed in primary health care. And the third is the organization of primary health care and policies directed to primary health care. Started all with a very clever idea by Professor Lynn Gonçalves at the Coimbra University, and it started before the 2019 pandemic. His idea was to set up an intervention where cardiologists, general practitioners, and patients were brought together through information technology. It also interested us because we were talking about heart conditions, and heart conditions are very common in primary healthcare, so heart failure, chronic ischemic heart disease, and dysrhythmias. And also, we were interested in knowing how patients understood and used the technology and how that influenced their experience of their illness with the heart problems. 2017, this project aimed to implement teleconsultations between the GPs and the cardiologists. And this was for people living in many different uh, geographical areas. In collaboration with Nova Faculty of Sciences and Social Humanities, we chose qualitative methods because they helped to identify unexpected experiences from all people involved and provide in-depth understanding of how participants' interactions with interventions produce change, facilitating the understanding of the phenomenon of teleconsultations. In Six Nova, we are very much interested in working with uh, several disciplines uh, because we like very much uh, to mixture methods, techniques, and uh, um, different theoretical approaches. Health issues are complex, where different approaches uh, and uh, different methods can really give us a very deep understanding. For example, when a clinical research investigates the impact of a risk factor as smoking and the, the, the likelihood that older people can experience in the future dementia, looking to biomedical indicators. Social scientists are very well equipped to look to different factors. There is a social construction of a, a disease, illness, and health. We need to understand the social processes that really shape health, uh, the delivery of health services, and also shape medicine itself. Patients and physicians recognized a better prioritization of the health issues and also an improved collaborative practice. Patients revealed a strong support for teleconsultations on the ground of interprofessional collaboration and the decrease in unnecessary uh, visits to the hospital. Patients presented a passive attitude. We found that this uh, may be an interesting gap of knowledge to know more about uh, how patients' health literacy might influence the decision-making. When GPs saw themselves with cardiologists, they had to renegotiate their roles. The GPs favored the fact that the patients are not present many times, as they could discuss with, as peers with the cardiologists. GPs also had a patient advocate uh, function, as they clarified for the patient what were the products for, of the teleconsultation. Cardiologists expressed positive attitudes toward this shared caring. The cardiologists recognized the crucial role of the GP, who already knew the patient for a long time and uh, could have more information about the patient and the family. Physicians felt that doctor-patient relationship will retain a central role in the way care is perceived. This happens regardless of the mode of the delivery, if it's virtual or presential appointment. My strength of this project was that it was the first case study to examine uh, patients, physicians, cardiologists and GPs' uh, perceptions on uh, the implementation of teleconsultations in the, the real world. It is uh, also um, quite noticeable that the multidisciplinary team pr provided us a more complete view of this phenomena under study. During the pandemic, as this tool became valuable for, uh, for uh, uh, all the clinical uh, activities widely, so uh, uh, this was boosted and uh, it would be quite important to uh, develop this research after this point. So there are three main points that we want to take out of this paper. 
The first one is that joint teleconsultations, they actually improve the continuity of care when patients have to navigate between primary health care and secondary health care. Second take home message is that patients value face-to-face -face components, so they value it in terms of doctor-patient relationship, uh, this elements of interaction and, uh, and non-verbal cues. So in a sense, uh, I think that these joint teleconsultations will probably have to be used in combination with face-to-face -face modalities. So they will never replace them. Uh, they will probably provide patients with better accessibility of care and help them do the transition between levels of care. But face-to-face -face is still very, very important.